Welcome to 6.5 on the Road's continuing coverage of Supercomputing 2024. I'm Dave Nicholson, and I'm joined by friend of the show, Matt Leibowitz. We're here to talk about data center sustainability. Matt, what does that even mean to be sustainable? <laughs> well, uh, you know, for many organizations, let me, let me I'll back up before I answer that. How many how many times have you seen in, in the public, you know, CEOs or, or heads of companies have made public commitments to either sustainability, carbon neutrality, or some other ESG goal? They they can't ignore their data centers. That's a part of their business, right? Especially uh, large engineering firms and, and companies that make use of a lot of compute. So combine that with the rise in AI, companies can no longer ignore their data centers as part of measuring their full greenhouse gas emissions and their impact that their data centers have. And so a sustainable data center is one that uh, uses energy efficiently, that uses water efficiently. We don't want to talk about the use of water enough in data centers. So using energy and water efficiently and does so in a way that consumes as much renewable energy as possible and is again as efficient as possible so as to not be wasteful. Let's not assume that everyone understands how uh, either water or electricity is being used in the data center. Um, I'm going to pretend that I think, well, sure, you've got the lights and then you have the water that the folks who work there need to drink. But what else do we need to worry about? And we don't, they can bring their own water from home. The, the, the water in a data center is used for the chillers, right? The, the equipment that, that can uh, cool the rooms, that basically for the HVAC equipment. Uh, it can be used for direct liquid cooling if they've got, uh, you know, large scale AI servers where they have water usage there. The, and then electricity is is the all the IT equipment. So there's obviously the lights, there's the facility itself, the equipment, the energy that's required there. But the IT equipment is what we really uh, care most about. Um, and, you know, I think organizations for a long time have not really needed to worry about this as much. But with the rise of AI and with just a massive uh, jump in energy consumption between what we would consider a traditional enterprise data center rack and that of uh, AI powered rack, it's night and day. We're talking six to 10 times more power, sometimes even more. And in the future, it's, it's not going to get any better. So my understanding is that current latest generation, if you will, uh, technology from Dell provides racks that can draw 480 kilowatts of power at a time, and they're engineered to uh, be able to handle one megawatt in a rack at some point in the near future. Uh, what's interesting about that is when we talk about sustainability, often the phrase sustainability conjures up this idea that we want to do things the right way, the responsible way. But we've reached an inflection point. I'd like to get your thoughts on this, if you agree or disagree. We've reached an inflection point where sustainability means are we going to be able to actually sustain this at all? Can we do this at all? Not even can we do this in a good way that doesn't harm the environment, but literally where are we going to get all the power? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Do, do you agree that the conversation has changed over the last couple of years because of AI? Yes, there's two parts. I'll start with, I'll go in reverse order. You're absolutely right. I think the world uh, is, is, quickly entering a phase where we might not have enough power for the growth in AI. I think, you know, I'm just spitballing, but I think, you know, the growth in data centers as a result of AI is probably going to be as significant or more significant as when we first saw cloud computing grow, you know, 15 years ago or more, where we're going to start to see massive growth in data centers. So figuring out a few things. One, can I locate those data centers geographically close to renewable or clean energy sources? There's not enough clean and renewable energy sources on the planet right now to satisfy that need. So figuring out how organizations and how the world is going to get power for these data centers is going to be a major focus, I think, of the next five to 10 years. I think we're going to see Again, nuclear, small modular nuclear reactors start the growth there, the growth in you know renewable solar, hydro, wind, as much as we can to get more power into the data centers. That's the, the power part. In terms of being sustainable for the organization, it's not just can I be you know smart about my energy consumption? Can I reduce the total amount of kilowatt hours that I'm consuming in my data center from an energy source that's powered by 
coal or, or uh, you know, natural gas or something like that. There's also the equipment in your data center itself. Are you recycling any of that equipment? Uh, are you, re you know, can you get that equipment to a recycling center so the rare earth elements and the equipment that's in there or the, the minerals that are in there can be recycled so they don't sit in a landfill forever. forever. Uh, so there's not only the, can I be more sustainable on the energy side, reduce the power, reduce the water, but also am I being responsible with the equipment I have, how it's being disposed of, and can I make intelligent decisions about the acquisition of new equipment? Yeah, I'd like to give a couple of data points to folks who don't, who just can't wrap their head around the kind of power requirements that we're talking about here. Um, if we so a kilowatt of power, if you translate that into horsepower, it's one point three horsepower. So a hundred kilowatts, which is about a fifth of what the kind of leading edge Dell rack technology can deliver today. That's one hundred and thirty horsepower. That's like an engine in a small car running at redline. 24 hours a day in that rack that's maybe call it the size of a refrigerator. It's completely insane. And we're talking about getting to one megawatt being consumed on that floor tile. In Colorado, Colorado Springs in particular, at eight cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, if you run one megawatt in a data center 12 hours a day, your electric bill is going to be 25 or $30,000 a month. One rack in the very near future, one rack of equipment. So one thing we can trust people to do in the sustainability realm is act in their own best interest. And if you want to talk about being green, <laughs> there's a lot of green that goes into paying for that power. So obviously electricity and, and power efficiency is something that you are going to focus on. But what are some of the other things? If, if, if Dell is coming in with a services checklist of the check boxes that, that, that people should be focusing on from a sustainability perspective. What are those things aside from uh, power efficiency that people need to be aware of? Uh, well, so uh, I love that analogy, by the way, if you're not a car person, I'll tell you the analogy that I use it's microwaves. Good, good. Most yes. microwaves operated around one point or 1100 Watts or call it one kilowatt. So if you've got a megawatt of power, you are microwaving 1000 hot pockets at the same time. <laughs> So it's, I mean, it's not a small amount of energy. You're absolutely right. Um, in terms of the, the types of things that we do, as you said, it's more than just, can I use energy efficiently? Most data centers, most enterprise data centers are not comfortable operating their equipment at higher levels of utilization. If you look at a public cloud, for example, they are very comfortable operating in the high 80, 85% uh, utilization rates in enterprise data center, much, much lower than that. So there's waste in their existing equipment. So we want to help them drive up the utilization, utilize newer, more modern uh, energy efficient equipment. If they're using old storage arrays that are using spinning disks, maybe they should look at something that's powered by solid state that consumes far less power. Uh, all of those types of things are the, the things that we try to help customers with to figure out ways that they can be more efficient in their data centers with the with consumption of energy. Again, I, I know we bring up water a lot, but water is not a big deal if you're running your data center in a location that's not starved, that doesn't have, the water's plentiful, right? But if you're standing up data centers in locations like California, where there's frequent water shortages, or in Asia or Northern Africa, where there's significant shortages of water, the, consump the amount of consumption of water that you use in that data center is going to impact the local environment. And so we want to make sure uh, organizations are being smart about that. Well, on the subject of water, uh, talk about direct liquid cooling and how that can um, change the game and kind of tilt us in the direction of sustainability, if so. Yeah, so the two common ways that, that uh, organizations can cool their equipment are uh, air cooling, and water cooling. Now there's a third way, which is known as immersion cooling, where they immerse the server in this non-electrically conductive uh, oil or liquid. That is probably less common, but the two most common are air and water. Now air is pretty efficient at moving, removing heat from a system, but water is far more efficient at taking heat out of a system. So it doesn't get, it doesn't just move into the, um, into the environment, right? In, in air cooling, you're kind of pushing the air out. With water cooling, you can take the air out, 
put it into the water, which can absorb far more heat. It can go to a radiator, just like a car. It works the same as, as if you drive a gas powered car, it works exactly the same. You take the heat out, you put it in the water, you move it over to a radiator that's cooled, then you move that cooled water back into the system. We are, I think, gonna see the growth of, of uh, liquid cooling in AI significantly in the next probably five years. And this is one area where I think Dell innovates really well. We have direct liquid cooling solutions for our uh, AI enabled XE servers that I think we're, you know, we're going to, we're seeing more and more demand uh, every single day. So it's a more efficient way of removing heat from a system. What about recovering energy from that now heated water? Is that getting into the realm of absurdity or is that something that realistically will happen down the line instead of using energy to radiate heat out and cool the water in a traditional way? Um, you know, what if, what if we can use that heat, put that heat to good use? You know, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, hot tubs in a data center, of course. But 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 seriously, are there ways to recover energy from that heat in the future or today? Hot tubs in a data center is the kind of thinking that we need in leadership around here. I like it. Here, so there are some organizations that are doing that to heat. For example, if the data center is geographically located right next to the, the building where the company operates, they can move some of that heat from that data center into the building to reduce the need for forced hot air. They can reuse that heat. There was actually a small data center in the UK that pushed their hot air over to a local YMCA to, to heat their swimming pool. Great idea. The, the main challenge with that is that water loses heat very quickly over long distances. And so it would be difficult for a data center in a city to warm or use that energy for the local suburbs. So I think we're going to see that most in, in locations where the data center is located close to another facility, whether it's an office building or something else, where that waste heat can be used more efficiently. But I think for now, we're other than hot tubs in the data center, which again, I fully support, uh, I think we're gonna see use of that, that heat or that heated water uh, into a radiator back into the system or to heat the local buildings. Well, I liked your visual of, of uh, a thousand microwave ovens uh, when talking, you know, trying to kind of characterize power consumption to folks so people can get their head around it. Um, uh, the, 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 dissipa the dissipation of heat that's required is another thing that can kind of be visualized. If you ask the question, how much heat do we have to dissipate if you're giving a system one kilowatt or one, you know, one kilowatt hour of electricity, it's basically 99% of that is 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 transmogrified into heat. It's almost like the compute is a bonus that we get for generating heat from electricity. It really is crazy. And so back to that thousand watt example, um, what is a hairdryer? A thousand, fifteen hundred watts Enough for a hairdryer. When my for, wife turns hers on. <laughs> yeah. So think about think about the energy, just think about the heat blowing out of that fifteen hundred watt thing. Now increase that 10x, 100x. It's massive and massive amounts of heat. So Dell has been in the IT business forever. This all feels like the realm of electricians and plumbers. <laughs> so are you are you figuring this out all in your own, or do you have significant partnerships that are developed? Because frankly, I don't trust that the same person who's good at dragging Cat5 cable is competent in connecting connectors that have to prevent water from getting on my $50,000 GPUs. So what's the <laughs> yeah. story there? Yeah, it's a great question. So a couple things. One, uh, within Dell's consulting service organization, we have tons of, of history of helping customers in their data centers around transformation, so migration, consolidation, uh, geographically locating them closest to where they need to be. So we have a lot of, uh, you know, reputation there, a lot of great experience, but we do have partnerships that we work with, including companies like Schneider Electric. It's a great example of, you know, what you're talking about before, where does that heat go, right? When you're dis trying to dissipate all that heat, especially with air cooling, it has to go somewhere. We work with Schneider. We use some of their software to do computational fluid dynamics, essentially mapping in the data center where the hot air goes when it leaves that server, when it leaves that rack. Can we design it in such a way so that we can contain it to the hot aisle versus the cold aisle? You know, these are things that 
organizations that have built a data center over a long time, maybe they did that in the beginning, but they haven't really done that as their data center has grown organically. We find things like cables running under the floors, restricting airflow, all those types of things. And so we do this CFD analysis to figure out where the hot air is going and how we can improve it. Our services teams can actually help them design their rack layouts such that they don't, they, we can reduce uh, some of that waste heat and make sure it goes into the right place. So yes, we have our own experienced people, but we also have strong partnerships like, uh, like with Schneider, where we bring, we go to the market together with them. So Matt, it's, at a certain level, everyone's data center is a bespoke, unique, completely different environment. So it's one thing to say, Dell Sustainability Services, we'll come in and help you with everything. But have you done anything to make sense of this? Uh, I know you can't productize something that that ends up being a very specific service, but uh, what can you tell me about kind of the fundamentals of what you do? Do you have basic packages or guidance that you give people? We do, yes. Yeah, some of this is launched at Supercompute24. So we have three uh, consulting services that we've launched that coincide with uh, Dell's long history of sustainability services around asset recovery, recycling, recycling, and things like that. But we start with what we refer to as ProConsult Advisory, which is where we help customers develop a roadmap and a strategy to how to go from that bespoke data center you just spoke about to something that's more sustainable with a plan and a roadmap and a framework for how to get there. But then we also introduce what we call implementation services for sustainable data centers, which is sort of like phase two. You've got this roadmap and a strategy and you know how to get there, but maybe you just need some help with how to do it. Our implementation services, we were, again, we partner with companies like Schneider to come in and actually implement those strategies, implement the change that's needed to be more sustainable. And then finally, we've launched something we call advisory subscription services for sustainable data centers. And think about that as a way for customers to stay engaged with Dell over a period of months, two years, to make sure that they're staying on target, hit, hitting their KPIs, have the data that they need visible to report up to their boards of directors and their stakeholders. We stay engaged with them to make sure they're they're hitting their sustainability goals. So we want to be a customer's partner over the long term for their sustainability journey. We don't want to just come in, do a bunch of stuff and leave. We want to stay with them on, on their journey. And we feel these services can help them do that. Yeah, making it easy. That's great. It reminds me of the, uh, I'm going to date myself, Calgon, take me away. Uh, <laughs> I remember that one. Sort of relaxing idea because CIOs and CTOs are at their wits end trying to figure this stuff out. So uh, I, I really like the the third part of that, making sure that, that, that the metrics can be communicated to where they need to be communicated because um, things under the heading of ESG at the boardroom level are critically important at this point. Well, I just want to remind everyone that this question of sustainability has changed from simply a conversation about doing things the right way, um, the environmentally sustainable way. It's changed to a point where if you can't do things sustainably, you can't do them at all. Literally, it's unsustainable, the direction we're heading now, without significant changes in how we generate power, how we dissipate heat. Um, Matt, it's great to, uh, to, to, to hear the passion that you and your team have for this subject. I know it's super interesting getting in and crawling around the weeds of kilowatt hours and BTUs and, and all of that and eking out efficiency. And the great news is, again, the green pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is uh, environmental responsibility and money. With that, again, Matt Leibowitz, Dell Technologies, thank you very much for being here with us on 6.5 on the Roads, continuing coverage of Supercomputing 2024. 